couple of weeks ago, my dad found a nest in our fig tree. And then yesterday, my mom found out that the eggs have hatched. Let's go look at them. And in here, I can see a baby bird. I can actually hear the parents growling at us. But they're in that little nest there. How many do you count? One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Three new baby birds. Oh, they're so cute. Do you remember what kind of birds they are? Mockingbirds. Yep, they are baby mockingbirds. Don't you think that the one we found in the car was this? Yeah, it was a mockingbird, but it, it was from a different nest, I think. It looks like these. Yeah. All right, tell them bye-bye. Say bye, baby birdies. Bye, baby birdies. They're so cute. And now we are going to leave those baby birds alone so that their parents can get to them and take care of them. And we will enjoy watching them grow up uh, this summer over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> took a minute to come out to the garden. Eleanor wanted to run back inside and so I took a minute to come out by myself to go ahead and pick my hot peppers. I started picking these uh, long slim cayenne peppers and uh, the reason that they're in this freezer bag is because I talked to one of my friends at church who made some homemade uh, jalapeno hot sauce that y'all it was so good so I asked him I was like so uh, how do you deal with all of your peppers not uh, not being done and ready to be made in the hot sauce at the same time he said oh I just pick them I wash them dry them off really good and then put them in the freezer until I've got all that I need or want to make my hot sauce so that's what I'm gonna do this is gonna be my long slim cayenne pepper bag and so I'll come out here about once a week pick off the good and red ones and uh, wash them off dry them off and I'll put them in this bag with the others until I've got enough to make a mess of good hot sauce so I'll keep you updated on that and when I do make the hot sauce I'll share it with you earlier this week I finally got around to planting our sweet potato slips all right, y'all know how in the last video, when Eleanor was cutting up watermelon with Jacqueline, she was like, oh, I wish y'all could smell this. This is the opposite. I'm so glad you cannot smell this. Uh, I let the sweet potato slips sit in this water for way too long and a bunch of them rotted and it smells terrible. So I lost most of the Beauregard slips that I had. I've only got like three of those left and the roots don't look great, but we're gonna plant them and see how they do. Uh, luckily, I've got a big bunch of these Georgia Jets. So we're gonna put them all on the ground here, see what we get uh, coming out of it in this little corner of the garden. But uh, I'm excited to see how the Georgia Jet does and uh, the few Beauregard slips that we have. Maybe we'll have some decent ones come out of that. But the Georgia Jet is supposed to be a good bit sweeter than that Beauregard. It's supposed to be higher in sugar content than the Beauregard anyways, so uh, maybe it'll work out for the better that way. Before I could get the sweet potato slips in the ground, I really needed to clean out some of the weeds that were coming up close to this row. So I grabbed my stirrup hoe and I got to work. You can see how quickly this stirrup hoe got rid of these weeds. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description of this video so that you know where you can get a stirrup hoe from Haas Tools. Now y'all know how particular I am about keeping a pretty garden. So next, after I got rid of those weeds, I raked up this row so that it would look nice and pretty before I put the slips in. All 
I've got drip tape running under each of my rows and the emitters on the drip tape are right at 12 inches apart from each other. So I got my measuring stick out and I marked 12 inches so that I would know exactly where my sweet potato slips needed to go. Then as I got ready to plant, as I got to each of the slips, I dug all the way down to the drip tape with my hands so I wouldn't mess up the drip tape and so I could find the emitter and make sure that I was putting those roots right above the emitter. That way, when I put out water through my irrigation system, I know that the water is going straight to the roots of these sweet potato slips. That's going to help them do a little bit better during these Alabama summers when you're not really sure when you're going to get rain next. Overall, I planted a couple dozen of these sweet potato slips, and I think they look pretty good in their new rows. We'll see how they do. A lot of people uh, blanch their vegetables before freezing them, and that's supposed to help them retain their um, bounciness, their elasticity, and not get mushy. But so far, so good. Everything that we have frozen um, using the vacuum sealer has not gone mushy, and I don't know if it's because the moisture um, doesn't have a chance to like leach out of the food as much. But I also have been, and I didn't really think about this. <laughs> I didn't really think about it until after someone asked, but I have been cutting my vegetables and then putting them in the fridge for a day or two until I have time to pack them all because being able to do things in a you know several hour span is really difficult with working a full-time job um, and taking care of all the animals. And so, I have been setting it in the fridge and really there's not, they're not super wet. And so that may be helping us a lot too, but I'm not blanching them. Um, yeah, we don't blanch our vegetables. <laughs> now I did blanch my peaches um, in order to peel them. Clean hands. Clean counters. getting ready, or I am ready, just waiting. Um, I'll change clothes before I leave, but I'm waiting on the time to go to the movies with my mom. We're gonna go see the new Elvis movie. I've heard that it's really good. So when I'm doing this, um, this part has to be able to go into the vacuum sealer and not be all bunched up, so I can't fill it all the way to the brim. So, I'll pack it in there and I'm trying to pack and preserve vegetables in a size that we will eat in one sitting and so I can just thaw it out or I can um, steam it frozen or even I can put it in the microwave and cook it um, I'm trying to do it in packs that in sizes that make sense for our family so the doing this size bag is really good and this is um, two lines on the save a meal roll. So it has the instructions on the top of it, which is a good reminder. And it shows you exactly where to put your hands. And just take your bag and put it in here. vacuum sealed you can see every little piece right here and sealed bag that's ready to go in the freezer I have to keep my hand up so you can see my face a little bit um, I just finished evening chores with Zach got everybody fed and everybody locked up and I have been wanting to check on our mama ducks that are still sitting together 
on a bunch of eggs. Um, I wanna candle their eggs if I can. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Make sure we don't have anything rotting under them. I'll remove those if we do. So let's go do that. So here they are. We got two mama ducks right here. A Cayuga and a mixed duck. And I'm gonna make my way down here. And they will probably leave the nest without any trouble while I'm down here. I'm gonna go the, the dirt pathway to avoid snaky snakes, hopefully. Looks like I, where's that? I dropped a lighter down here, which is not good. Take that in. Look at this sweet nest. That's a Cayuga female. I'm gonna come down here and try to candle some eggs. I'm going to use my headlamp here to see what I can see. Okay, that one was a baby at one point, but it is definitely rotten. I still see veins in this one. I'm gonna turn my flash off and go. So this one, flip my cam, phone up like this, candle like this. I don't see any movement. Yep, that's just swishing around. This one is also rotten. Ooh, this one's good. Can you see the veins? All right, I'm gonna set it right there. I'm gonna try to candle it like this. You can see, see that big vein right there? So that one is okay. I don't see a ton of movement. This one is definitely bad. Ew. Let's see if I can show you how bad that is. It's a very bad egg. Oh, that one's good. Do you see those veins? Yay! That one doesn't look good. That one is also not developing. Let's see about this one. That one looks really good. And it's moving. Gosh, it's so hard to show you. Especially because I don't have my actual candler. But you can see the veins. And there's a baby moving in there. And this one. Gosh, it's so hard to tell. That one is bad. See that weird air cell on the side? That one is rotten. Trying to gently put the rotten ones to the side. Okay. I don't feel any more right here. These four look good. So hopefully they'll sit on them in the right spot. And all of these are bad, like very bad. So here we have four eggs that are hopefully going to fully develop. That one, I'm sorry, three eggs. That's a fresh egg, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now. So hopefully 
We've got at least three here that maybe they'll hatch. And I didn't tell y'all, but they built this nest on a bank. See, it's all, I'm down on the bottom of the bank and the chicken pens are up there and our gates right there. So it's down this hill and their nest was actually right there. It was right there in that bare spot. And when we finally got some rain, it washed their nest down the hill. So sad, but they came back to it. I really thought that they wouldn't. So really three is pretty good at this point. We'll update you soon. Go back mamas, y'all can go back. They're getting some water. They'll head back down there in just a second. It is hot. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but it really is, it's hot. Um, for it being after nine o'clock, and I'm sweating this bad and I'm not doing any major labor. It's hot. Um, I didn't tell Zach I was out here checking eggs. So he's probably like, what is she doing? Why is it taking her so long to come in? But I'm headed in now.